Okay, so don't worry, you don't need to have watched the previous parts to understand this video, but you should watch them after this one. So the only thing you need to know, war bad, planes rad. Ain't that right, Jonathan? So our first contender, a very requested plane, the A-10 Thunderbolt II, are also known as the A-10 Warthog, are just hog, are... Also, shut up, yeah, you shut, shut. I know it's not a fighter jet, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the liberty to talk about non-fighter jets in this series. So this thing is basically a tank with wings. What does that mean though? Well, it was built to be a close air support plane, meaning it would get down and dirty into the front lines, helping the troops on the ground. This rule also meant it would be exposed to a lot of fire. This in turn also meant it needed to be able to take a hit. Fuck. And take a hit, it could. For starters, bathtub. The cockpit and parts of the flight control system are protected by 540 kilograms of titanium aircraft armor. Literally, a titanium bathtub. It also has a double redundant hydraulic flight system explanation in the description and a mechanical system as a backup if hydraulics are lost. Furthermore, the HAW is designed to be able to fly with one engine, half of the tail, one elevator, and half a wing missing. But besides being sturdy, what else does a tank have? wheels. A very big gun. And this plane does have a very big gun. The Gao 8A Avenger Auto Cannon. It has a firing rate of about 3,900 rounds per minute, which adds to its iconic sound. Also, the gun was indeed quite big. So next for our first Soviet jet, the Su-27 Flanker. So the Flanker, like many other jets in this series, was designed for air superiority. It was super maneuverable, as was often demonstrated on air shows when it did the Cobra maneuver. And at the time, the Soviets said it was the only aircraft capable of such a maneuver. The fuck you say? Yeah, you can't do that. You wanna go? Yeah, come on, let's go big boy. Yeah, I'm coming. Wait. That's not what I meant. Another notable characteristic were its wings, which were essentially a cross between swept wings and cropped delta wings. Shut up, that sentence was not generated by AI. I didn't say anything. Furthermore, the flanker had a naval variant, the Su-27K or Su-33, which had canards for additional lift so it could take off quicker. And is it just me or do canards kind of make a plane look a little bit more like a fish? So our next jet is the famed Su-57 Felon. So this jet is Russia's first stealth aircraft and it was built to compete with the F-22 and the F-35. Meaning it has radar absorbent materials and internal weapons bay and a certain shape in order to reduce its radar cross section. Although it does all of these things, except for maybe the internal weapons bay, a lot worse than its competition. What the fuck? What? Are those? Visible screws? But what it does have, which the other two don't, is thrust vectoring on all three axes, so pitch, yaw, and roll. This also makes it super maneuverable on all of these axes. Also, the Su-57 can super cruise, meaning travel at supersonic speeds without afterburner, at around Mach 2. Now, all of this would be pretty nice, except for the screws, if Russia would be able to make more than 10 of them. Although, let's cut them some slack, some might even say it's the stealthiest jet there has ever been, because no one has ever seen it operate before. No, but all jokes aside, from an engineering standpoint, it is indeed a truly impressive machine. Subscribe and leave a like if you want to, nobody is forcing you. Also, as I announced in my last video, I have created a Discord server and a Twitter account for you guys to stay updated and to connect with each other, and to see the beautiful picture of my dog that I posted on Twitter. So yeah, I hope you find that it was time spent well watching my video, and leave a comment, I really do read them, and yeah, okay, see you in the next one.